Good evening. We're all good. Brian's all good. Like approved. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So welcome to the first planning board meeting of 2018. Everybody started putting the eight instead of the seven. Uh, so tonight uh, we've got a packed agenda with <laughs> business to be considered by the board at any time. And luckily for most of the people here, uh, the public hearing that was scheduled for 730 for Saddle Hill Road stormwater management permit has been continued to January 22nd. Well, the board needs to officially vote. We have to officially Open vote it and it. continue it. it. Mm -hmm. So we'll vote on that. Um, and during that period, we'll conduct the other one. So can I have a motion to open the public hearing? I make a motion to Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Can I get a motion to continue the public hearing motion. to January 22nd at what time? Well, you have a 7.30 and an 8.35, and then you've got two, possibly three other items to be con considered. So you let me know what you're <laughs> what is what are the other uh, two? 7:30 is the first public hearing for the Chamberlain and Wayland <coughs> definitive subdivision. Okay. At 8:35 is the continuation of the open space Whisper Way um, subdivision. Um, then we're going to review the articles uh, Zach has um, recommended for town meeting okay, and just vote them to be put on the warrant. Not the public hearing will be at a later okay. date. And then. Um, to review the town report that I'm in the process of writing for the uh, annual town report. Mm -hmm. And then there's the potential that Pulte will be coming in with the request for an off-premise sign. Okay. That is not been confirmed yet. Okay. Um, do what do you not, recommend? Do we not think we wait till the next meeting? Or? Who? Uh, Saddle Hill. Saddle Hill. Mm -hmm. Can you wait till the next meeting, Victor? Mm -hmm. Can Saddle Hill Stormwater Management wait till our first meeting in February instead of January 22nd? <laughs> really? I mean, ideally, it would be the 22nd, if at all possible. Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, looking at the schedule, <coughs> you're I mean, probably going to go over just because of that. Or unless the board wants to start at 7 and give them a half an hour at 7. I don't know if that's enough time. It'd be good. Okay, we'll do it. I could be late, but there'll be other okay. members that could be here. Seven. Can you get everything done at seven? It's been a half yep. hour. That'd be great. Yeah, you I think have been before us before. Not on this. Not a, no, but you actually think you're going to get it done in a half hour? <laughs> <laughs> I can talk real fast. Okay. <laughs> well, so in speaking, not not to counteract what Victor's saying, but in speaking with their engineer who's doing the work. Um, his anticipation is to have everything to beta this week and then have a meeting with beta offline so that they can resolve any outstanding issues right. and then come to you on the 22nd sort of in a kind of an agreement and then okay. beta. So hopefully that will smooth that the process over. Spoon. That was a goal, cool. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so, um, so, <clears throat> I just, so continuation to January 22nd at 7 p.m. Yep. Mm -hmm. Get a motion. I make a motion to continue it to January 22nd, did you say? Mm -hmm. At 7 o'clock? Yep. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Thank you. Thank you. First item on the agenda is uh, Street Acceptance Cobbler's Way. Mr. Gassett. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Hi, I'm Brian Gassett, uh, owner of Pelican Estates, and I'm looking to get my road all signed up and turned over to the town, but cobbler's way. Jennifer, do you want to get all? Um, uh, yeah, I've been out. I was out there. I met Brian out there. I don't know, a month or month and a half ago maybe um, we, we talked about some landscaping issues that he's he's completed that and everything else looked to be completed um, we I don't think Luckner has been out there right to and he, he was your inspector right? Correct. But, yeah so I don't think Luckner has been out there to do his final and now with the snow cover it's gonna be hard in the interim but at this point um, I think he's probably ready to go 
Um, and I would suggest that the board uh, vote to put it on the warrant, and then if Lochner comes back with some issues, we could reconsider it at a later okay. date. Could we put a, through Chakucha, could we put just a stipulation at the end of that to, to say that after the snow is gone and we can take a look at that, if there's anything continuous? Y yeah, that would happen anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, DPW still has to look at it, and Lochner, and yeah, so that would happen anyway. Okay. Any questions, additional questions, comments from the board? I always feel more comfortable having all the facts in front of us before, even if we're voting on a placeholder, um, kind of echoing what Cliff was saying. Um, and we have asked for more details from another uh, uh, developer. Um, that's, just, that's just from my view of this in general, of any street project, uh, street acceptance. Um, I'm just leery of going ahead and putting it on, and then if there are problems after the fact, then we'd have to take it off, and that's... What's the date for? So the all articles have to be into the town manager's office by February 6th, so okay. we don't really have a lot of wiggle room, and I, I don't know that you're going to get, you know, clean ground mm -hmm. between now and February 6th, clear ground, so... <laughs> To the chair. Um, so, so what is the process once the snow melts and we get a chance to take yep. a look? So then Luckner, who's our inspector for this project, will go out and review. I mean, he's been inspecting it all along. There really hasn't yeah, been any issues. Yeah, so he'll just do a final walkthrough and just confirm that all the landscaping's in and everything is, you know, in place. And then DBW will go out and just say yes or no, we're willing to accept the road at, in the condition that's in. If those two things are done, then it's fine. If, one of those things are not done, then the board would just pull it. And that should happen in plenty of time before the warrants get printed, so I don't even know that it needs to, that it would even need to be printed in the warrant at that point. Okay, so, so if, if everything isn't done mm -hmm. properly, mm -hmm. um, what is our process then? We can just say, oh, we, we no longer it. recommend it. We would just pull it, it from town meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then he could try next year. And then he could try next year, yep. We'll make sure it's done. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Just checking. <laughs> in, in general, it's a first year that we're doing this schedule, so that's, yeah. that's what my comment He was actually, is. I think, we had a request to do it last year, but yeah. wasn't going to be completed, yeah, so. Ran out of time last year, right. so we want to make sure we get it all spread away this year. So we've done several items that needed to get done, so. I'm yeah. sure if there is and anything, it would be something very minor. And, and we, all, we also have the issue with the giving the land to halt, so I'm not yeah, sure. It's I, all being worked on okay, as so. we speak. Honestly, that might be the only thing that would hold it up if that doesn't go through yeah. by town meeting. I think that would be the only, the open space has to be yeah. deeded to halt. Okay. So that might be the only thing I think would hold it up. Okay. Yeah, but you're aware of that too. We're working on it right they, now. They are, yeah. yeah. His attorney's already been in touch. Yep. Any other questions? I mean, through, the, through the chair, uh, Frank, I mean, I generally agree with you having all the facts up front, but I think in this case, especially we have an out, right? so I'm, I'm fine with this. Mm -hmm. Any comments from the audience? I want to make a motion to place it on town warrant. I make a motion, sorry. I make a motion to put it on town warrant. I'd be happy to second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Thank you. Great, thank you. Next item, street acceptance, Singletary Way. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Uh, hi, we're the owners of uh, Singletary Way. My name's uh, Kenny Masters. Mike Masters. And uh, we're looking for the board to take over Singletary Way, the town. Well, I'm not as familiar with this street as it's an older street that's been, I believe, completed for quite a while. Um, so I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know any more than that. To be uh -huh. honest with you, uh, it's it's completely completed, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah we, we just uh, finished paving, uh, putting the final coat right. on the circle itself. Yeah. So that was the last section. That yeah. Was, yeah. Right. And I think Luckner did look at that, yes, and he, did, yeah. he he's okay with all, all okay. of that. Any? I don't know if DPW got out there though before no, the snow came. No. Yeah. No. Uh, question: All yes. the all the house, homes have been built there. Uh, we have one empty lot, but all the other yeah, all the homes. And that will be built in the future. Yes. Okay. 
Any other questions? Curbs are all in and everything else? Yes. Yep. Sidewalks? Yep. It's all been looked at? Mm -hmm. yep. I have no more questions. Any comments from the audience? We get a motion. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to accept um, Singletary Way. To put it on the warrant. To put it on the warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, have a great evening. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Continued discussion regarding street acceptance, Legacy Farm South. Good evening. Roy McDowell representing Legacy Farms LLC. Here this evening to request uh, you accept putting on the warrant uh, Legacy Farm South for town meeting in May. Uh, the last time we met, we went over a number of things. We cleaned up our punch list. We've been in communication with John Westerling. He's aware of that. I told him that if, in fact, if we go on town warranty and I will walk that street together prior to town meeting, making sure that any areas that have been disturbed will have been reseated. Okay. Comments? <clears throat> Comments from the board? I have one question. Is that, what's, has anything changed since the last meeting? Right? Were they gonna, were, was there going to be any change to the sign, the location of the sign? Uh, we actually added signs. They, they changed the rules very recently on crosswalk signs. You'll probably notice the signs are now this kind of a different color green. Yeah. And we've replaced all the sidewalk signs per the recommendation of DPW. Got it. Got it. Right. That's the only change that was? Yes. Any comments from the audience? Jennifer? Um, no, I agree with everything Roy said, and I know they did have that conversation with John Westerling, and no issues. The world's complete. Joe Weston and Sampson has looked at it, and they're satisfied. Okay. They're okay with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> we have a motion. I move that we uh, put the road acceptance on the town warrant. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, so carry. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good evening, Rob. Good evening. Good sure. Happy New Year. Uh, discussion regarding setting a performance bond and lot releases. <coughs> Stony Brook Road. You look very familiar, you two. <laughs> <laughs> So um, they presented us with a um, bond estimate that we then sent over to Lockhart to review, and um, he came back with the additional amount. So I believe that the agreed amount amount is four hundred thousand two ninety nine and sixty cents for the bond for Stony Brook Road. Okay. Any issues with that or no? No. When do you guys first intend uh, to break ground? Uh, hopefully in the spring. <laughs> start that pretty soon. <laughs> Maybe a little longer this spring. <laughs> 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 Your team's done a really great job of maintaining that property for years. Oh, that the neighbors really appreciate it, and uh, uh, it'll be good to have new neighbors. <laughs> Any other comments from the board? Comments from the audience? Get a motion. Make a motion to uh, set the performance bond. Was it Jennifer? Four hundred ninety-nine. Four hundred two ninety-nine sixty cents. Set it at the price so noted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. And then Thank, you. Also, Thank you. Oh. They're also here to request lot releases for several oh, that's of right. the lots. Um, which the board could vote and sign this <coughs> contingent upon receipt of the the, the bond, bond, and we will hold this in our office till they receive the bond. Okay. Till we receive the bond. Motion. I make a motion that we accept the um, form K. Yeah, form K. In addition to the bond. And uh, that does not get released and until that we receive the bond in our office. That is received in the office. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Okay. It's just discussion. This is lots 41, 43, and 47. No, this is these lots right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. 3A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 18A, 19A, 20A, 21A, um, 22A, 23A, yeah. Yeah. I can keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I see. That's why it's a high number. Way to go. Yeah. yeah. All right. I just need you guys to sign this. Okay. You guys are all set. Okay. So whatever you want to bring them on. Thank you. Take care. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. There's something else. There's Tony Brooke on the oh. agenda too, right? What do you? Yes. Two Dan. Different applicant. Yeah. That's the uh, A&R plan. Okay. Next item is an ANR plan, 191 Lumber Street, 1 Echo Brook Lane. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Introduce yourself. I am Chris Nation, representing 20th Century Homes. What you have before you is an ANR plan. Shows four lots, and down uh, here to have you sign it, <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer. Do you want to? Um, so I actually wasn't here when this was submitted. I was out. Um, I believe sick, um, so I didn't. I wasn't clear. What's the purpose of you're just creating new buildable lots? Uh, correct. We already own 191 lumber, and we acquired more land okay. up on Echo. So there's an existing home, okay. basically uh, on that parcel that would be showing lot two. On that general lot, there's an existing home and pool that okay. would be raised. So how many new lots are you creating? Uh, two, technically. Two. Okay. One would be accessed from lumber, one additional from Echo. Okay. okay. Uh, the plan meets the, the requirements for AR, and okay. I would recommend signature. And just discuss because it's on here. The uh, I believe that <clears throat> there's a elimination of an existing lot line and replaced by the new lots. Mm -hmm. Things have been juggled around to make this work for area and okay. frontage. Yes. Okay. Any other comments from the board? One, I have one question. So on lot three, that's the one that's having the uh, lot line being eliminated. Uh, will the, and so now it looks like there is access on both lumber as well as echo. Is that correct on the new? Um, kind of. But I believe his legal frontage will be on lumber. It'll be on lumber? I believe, if I read So the driveway will be coming out on lumber. I believe, right? That is the intention to be on lumber. Currently, um, as it's listed as 191 Lumber Street is what makes up that original parcel that's now called Lot 3 and 4. Yeah. Got it. Just that with Lot 3, it looks like it's accessing both. It's a corner lot to, to aim at your point. And I was just curious in terms of where you anticipate the driveway to be coming out on Lumber or out on Echo? Lumber. lumber. Question through the chair? Yep. And lot one includes all of the land on the left side of this graphic. Just for clarity, Could lot, you that? lot one is this goes is the goes back the furthest here. That's correct. Yes, it goes. Lot one goes all the way back to that uh, line of seventy two point seventy. Yep. Excellent. <clears throat> That's what gets it to 45,000 square feet. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Comments from the audience? Motion? Motion we approve the same or Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Thank you. We'll sign. Thank you. How many? Two in a day. Two in a day. Just the 
that's why I sat here. So, I could sign it. <laughs> so you can do that. <laughs> The next item is A&R Plan 4143 and 47 Stony Brook Road. Hi, good evening. How are you? Good evening. Hi, my name is uh, Dave Marquardt. Uh, here for Prime Properties. Kenny and Michael. Yes, sir. Uh, we're here to Just to mess with them, we should like delay this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here for three lots. Uh, lot 10, <coughs> lot 12. The original shape of 10 was this. With 124 feet frontage, remains the same. 11 uh, is the yellow, if you will. 107 foot of frontage and 142 with 12. We're conveying this little piece here to this lot, this little piece here to this lot. Uh, 60,000, 63, and 75,000. It's own blocks. So all three lots conform. The purpose of the plan is positioning of the houses is a little bit. Uh, if you will, down South Road and Garden is here, a little bit lower on the, away from the lot line between South Road and Garden. Just trying to fatten out the lots. Okay. It meets the requirements, and I would recommend signature. Questions, comments? Cl clarification, 14B is, a, is a, a fourth lot that's not included in this? Correct, it's already, it's already been endorsed. It doesn't, we're, not, we're not changing anything on 14. And the uh, steep incline that's kind of like a, on both sides, uh, I'm a little confused where lot 11C is, like in, in, in how it fits in the real world. Um, so is this, this is a lot that has a drainage ditch that comes down? Yeah, lot, lot C is the stock area, <coughs> the stock area that's on the ground. Okay. That's, that's lot, that stock pile would be about here. Okay. From 11 to 12. The I drain, see. The drainage would be here. So the uh, 12 goes back further, deeper, yeah, and the driveway might. Right. left. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you're just kind of shifting some of the land so the houses fit better. Correct. Thank you. Any other comments? If I may just ask the question. What's going in uh, 14B? It's a house. Another okay, house. That. Yeah. So you have four lots all together. Well, we're here for three. Eight fourteen's already been created okay. in the previous plan. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Comments or questions from the audience? Anyone want to make a motion? Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> second. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So carry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year again for the <laughs> third time. <laughs> yeah, right. Next item is uh, possible bond release Davenport Lane. Yeah. Uh, Victor Galvani, developer of Davenport Lane, here for a uh, bond reduction, um, possibly for uh, Foot Street. I like how you said possibly. <laughs> you know, not being scared. Yes. <laughs> it's on to us in any way. Um, so most of the uh, improvements have been made to the road. Uh, we had a final conformance observation from Beta completed. Uh, Beta created uh, the memo, which I they all have folks it. all have. Yep. Um, so there's a, a few items on there. I guess we can, you know, go through them and discuss them, and, and then. I guess go from there. Jennifer, do you want to point those items out? 
Um, sure. So the first thing is um, some additional things that uh, Beta would like added to the Aswell plants, which I've spoken with Victor, and he's agreed to charge his engineer with doing those things, and right. none of them seem to be too right, we cumbersome. Joe, we, we submitted a plan to CONCOM, and, and that plan didn't quite meet some of the sure. items that Beta wanted, so uh, there's a list of, I think, four or five Yep. Pretty minor items if you're just looking to detail uh, specific spots for them. So I already talked to Joe about that, so he's going to go ahead and, and uh, do that for us. So, so I think that one probably can get resolved pretty quickly. Um, the next one is um, sidewalks were constructed with impervious material, otherwise known as supertuminous concrete. Um, the approved plans that the planning board had approved was porous material, porous pavement. Um, and I think there's a little discrepancy as to whether or not that was already approved by the planning board or not. Um, I spoke with Victor earlier today and he pointed out on, I don't know if some of you may remember, back in May of 2016, they came in before you for an amended landscaping plan. It looks like this. And on that, um, they show the sidewalk as bituminous concrete. Um, this is the only thing that I could find in all of the documents today that shows that as bituminous concrete. And I also printed out the minutes from that um, meeting. <coughs> we didn't talk about bituminous concrete versus porous pavement at all. We just talked about landscaping. Um, so uh, <coughs> I would be of the opinion that the board didn't, uh, while they did approve the plan, they didn't approve that change officially. Um, I'm not here to make them rip it up and put down porous pavement, but because there could be a, a difference in the calculations for the stormwater management, uh, my suggestion to the board would be that they withhold some funds and require that the design engineer do the drainage calculations with the additional impervious surface to prove that their detention basin can do the, what it's supposed to do with the additional impervious surface. Okay. If, if, I, for the chair, if I'm correct then, mm -hmm. what you're saying is that if the pervious surface needs to run off somewhere in the room to, that's where that runoff is going? Well, if it's pervious, it can drain through the side. Yeah, I mean, imp imp impervious. impervious means it has to run yeah. off into the, the manholes and catch basins and go into the detention basin. So the agreement was, or the discussion? So the approved plans originally were approved as porous pavements, which means it would just like drain right through. Like we have on. Like on we did at the, the new school, and yeah, exactly. So, um, but they installed them with bituminous concrete. So why wouldn't we just question the report? Why wouldn't we just keep the entire bond until that work is done? So their bond is at about $260,000. I'm not sure that. I mean, it's, it's totally up to the board, but I'm not sure that it need, you need to hold that much. I mean, they have completed the ma majority, 90%, 95% of the work. Um, so in, in a normal subdivision process, you would release as things are completed. This isn't a subdivision, but technically it kind of is. Um, so, I mean, it's the board's decision completely. I'm just giving you my professional recommendation is that I, you know, would release some and hold back some. The chair, uh, do we? So the only thing that we see about a waiver is that plan. Um, there's, there's nothing else where we. I could not find any other documents that I've talked about. Will the board consider uh -huh. impervious surface in, on the sidewalk? We had gone in front of the uh, what is it, the architectural design design review board, board for the landscape plan and moving the sidewalk and making some changes. And as um, Jennifer and I you know, noted today, she said, I'm gonna go through the minutes. I, I don't specifically recall, you know, either way, we ended up um, making some pretty significant changes to this plan and came in front of the planning board. The, you know, the minutes, I, you know, she said that it wasn't specifically discussed. I, I don't know one way or the other. They ended up signing off on this plan and we ended up building it the way that the second point, the same thing with all, when we go a little bit deeper in here, you'll see Beta make some um, references to the actual landscaping and how it is and how it's different than, um, I think they were going off of uh, the older plan. 
and that's where there was some confusion. And I was mentioning that to Jennifer, so we had a discussion about that. Was this a board? Was this before, or after the? Is it the current board or the previous board? No, this board? was the previous board. Previous, previous board. board. Okay. <coughs> As for Jennifer, uh, does this trigger another review or check from the Conservation Commission? So um, I did speak with uh, Matt Crowley from Beta today who did the observation just to wrap my head around some of it and um, he did indicate that most if not all of that sidewalk is in conservation jurisdiction and so if they did change it from horse pavement to um, impervious surface that conservation should have had a project change. I briefly spoke with Don McAdam and he did not remember a project change. He didn't have time to go back through the entire file, but he did not recall a project change. And it was only a year and a half ago, so I, I would imagine he would have had some recollection of that. But I know that they've submitted for a certificate of, of, of compliance with CONCOM, and I know now that's on Don's radar, so they will look into that as well. So in our minutes that we've had, excuse me, um, through the chair, in, in our minutes that we had back in May of 2016, there's mm -hmm. nothing that shows anything? Uh, the only discussion was about the landscaping, and it did talk about the sidewalk meandering instead of going straight, but it didn't talk about the material that the sidewalk was constructed in. Okay, so my, my question to the chair is, our sidewalk guy, David Paul, is not in tonight. Right. Um, I'm sure that, that he'd like to have a piece of this somehow. Um, I don't know if that's within our jurisdiction to stay, but I do think that um, half of the release would be, in my mind, approvable at this point because they are in that, that place. But I'd still like to give David Paul a shot at it. Okay. We still have some other yeah. items to go yeah. over. So, so, we'll, so just go? keep that in mind and we'll go through. Right. Um, so the proposed sewer <coughs> infrastructure has been modified for the improved plans and was installed for plans submitted to the Board of Health. Um, because it's a private sewer system, the Board of Health has jurisdiction and I've spoken with them and they're happy with the installation and the functioning of the sewer system. So I don't believe that's really an issue for this board um, unless you want to make it one. Um, then uh, beta's records do not indicate successful vacuum testing of sewer manhole number four, sewer manhole number six. Contractors indicated believes these were done. Uh, however, in speaking with Victor, I believe his contractor is going to either retest or do the tests on this coming Wednesday. Retesting it on Wednesday. On Wednesday, the tenth, just to get the number and get it over to beta. So that will be done this Wednesday. Um, an additional fire hydrant was installed um, that was not on the plans in conformance with the town of conformance with the town of Hoppington Water Department regulations for hydrant spacing. I mean, I don't think we want to <laughs> worry about that? that. An additional hydrant, yeah, fire hydrant. The water department required an additional hydrant, so they added another hydrant. So that's a change from the plans, but I don't. I think it's a better change. I don't think. Uh -huh. it's a, um, Beta did not perform a comprehensive review of the installed plantings, but did note that the plantings were generally located per the approved plans in inadequate numbers. Several areas appeared to lack the proposed plantings, and there were several other areas where the planting numbers were reduced or altered. A number of earnings were also observed to be in poor health. The approved landscaping plans had been redlined, and notations were attached. So, as Victor had mentioned previously, Beta was looking at not the most recent landscaping plan. He's since looked at it and he had didn't have time to, because I was out for a couple days last week and I didn't have time to do all this coordination, so I um, sent that over to him today. He didn't have time to update this, but I spoke with him and he agrees that the, the approved plan has been okay. complied with for landscaping. Um, that actually deals with number, the next one too, the supplemental landscaping, so I'm not going to get into that. And then, then um, condition number four states that no exterior lighting shall be installed except where required by the state building code or is approved by the board. Three pole <coughs> mounted, bless you, three pole mounted luminaries approximately eight feet in height were observed along the roadway. Beta notes that the lights appear to be decorative and anticipates emitted light levels to be minimal. So my only comment to that is they installed three lights without your permission, however you want. Why would you have done that? I was talking to Jennifer about that today. I know from a safety perspective we were getting a lot of kind of nervousness from some of the uh, 
residents that lived in there because the when you when you entered off of 85, it was such a long uh, runway all, all the way out to the back of the property, and they were kind of complaining incessantly that they wanted to see some lighting back there. Um, you know, I think the discussion in the office. I think John Parsons. We already had run an electrical conduit out to the front, and they put these three small lights. That they're like eight feet tall. Yeah. We, There's a picture of them in the yeah, packet. On um, the back of the packet. Yeah, and the okay. feeling was that it was not necessary to come to the board for them, even though it. You know what? Obviously, clearly wasn't the. Uh, in, in hindsight, I think we thought we were doing them a favor because they were they were on us to to get some lighting in there. They were very. A uh, few of the women were nervous about walking all the way back. And, and but that doesn't and relieve the obligation to come to doesn't. the board. And if I remember, wasn't there an issue with the stone walls at the entrance? Yeah, that's been fixed, though. No, but that was also done, and then they asked for yeah. forgiveness afterwards. Right, they, they, the put, they put a the signage. Uh, the, the, the stone sign that says Davenport. Right. We, we had to change it to, change say, it to say Davenport Lane. Lane. Had to say the name because of the street. Because we don't... No. We don't identify neighborhoods right. anymore. Okay. Um, and then, um, due to snow cover, Beta could not determine if proposed access drives to the drainage swales and basins were constructed. Um, Beta notes that grades in these areas are mild and there are no obstructions that would prevent access by maintenance equipment. Um, I believe they've all been installed, all those driveway accesses and stuff, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and then finally, the installation of the soil absorption system was observed by others, and that was the um, Board of Health agent, Brian Besso. I spoke with him, and he satisfied with the installation of the system. Okay. So again, I think their bond is about $258,000, um, and I think they're just looking for some release of some funds, whatever. I mean, they would like the whole thing back, but <laughs> I don't know that the board should do that with some outstanding items, so I think, you know, whatever the board deems to release. Back to me. Um, okay, first I'd like to ask, you know, you understand the formality of what you do. You know you do. I mean, I, I assume that you do because you've been doing this for a long time. Sure. <clears throat> In this last year, You've been in front of the board a couple times and asked for mercy on doing stuff without going through proper channels to do that. Um, it kind of throws everybody's hands up and says, well, you know, when does um, the rules apply to you as well as everybody else? And um, You've been, you've been fined on that for the last incident with a stone wall that we had, and um, here we are again. I ju it just really kind of shakes the tree a little bit, and we're hoping to see what falls down next. Um, so, unbeknownst to all of that, I, I, I should have been privy to that in, in my readings. Um, I, I don't know, I think the bond should stay in our possession. Um, at least because, you know, if it was any, if it, anyone else comes before us, we'd, we'd be doing the same thing. Um, you've got a lot in town you're doing, and doing it good, we hope, because that's our intention as a board, is to create um, the same criteria for everybody. Um, and I'm not slighting you on that. I just think that right now, um, as a follow-up to the last time that you were in front of the board under the, for another problem, that you didn't, you just didn't, you just didn't come to the board and say we intend to do this, and you did it anyway. So I would say, I would say, let's hold the bond. Um, through the chat, the most expensive item is potentially the sidewalk, right? So to, I would imagine so, yeah. Right. So, how soon could we have an answer on whether, it, so now that it's impermeable? I don't know how soon you can get your engineer to do a. <laughs> Who just happened to walk in? <laughs> Lucky him. <laughs> <them. laughs> I mean, literally just walked in. <laughs> 
Um, so, Sorry, Joe, so, so when they, so this is Davenport we're talking about. When they did the sidewalk, they <clears throat> did it with bituminous concrete, yes. and the approved plans show it as porous pavement. And so there's some concern if the detention basin can handle the additional impervious surface. And so the board may want um, the design engineer to just do the calculations to determine that fact. And so I guess the question is, how long will that take? Well, that shouldn't be long at all. Uh, quite frankly, the, um, some of the issues associated with the project, the design standpoint, um, we tried to add. Could we have you come up to the mic? Yes, sure. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Just state your name. Good right. evening, Joe Lapidon. <laughs> uh, back in the design <laughs> stage, some of the best management practices that the uh, previous version of this board asked for were a few things that we added that weren't related strictly to managing stormwater. Uh, the rain garden in the center of the turnaround, for instance, um, the porous pavement. Um, somewhere on the site, and then the rooftop infiltration weren't set up to uh, manage stormwater per se, but to incorporate some of those best management practices, which were uh, very important to the town and at the state level at the time. So I would think that our stormwater is going to function whether we have porous pavement or in, uh, a pervious surface or an impervious surface, quite frankly. But we can certainly take a look at that stuff, that would be a quick thing to turn around. Well, to that point, if I may, to the chair, is um, that because the you, you're talking about how easy it is to change that, but you it, it isn't it isn't there now, right? And you're in front of the board looking for the bond to come back, and we it's hard for a board to see so many things not being done and then having you come here and then for us to say well why well we, because we thought that the we were helping the local um, residents because it was dark we put up lighting we have a strict enforcement for lighting the state of, of Massachusetts last at the end of last year came out with stormwater management um, criteria that is much more stringent than, it, than, than it's ever been, and they're they're pursuing. Um, and Cliff, uh, I'm going to ask you to kind of. Okay, but I think you've made the point to so just. All right, so so so, we we had John Westerling in front of us telling us that we had to we had to conform to um, stormwater management and find wherever that source comes from has to be rectified, and rather than wait for a problem to be there, we should have that all in place before we. Return about, I think. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I think the bond should stay. There's still some outstanding issues, um, and there just seems to be. And I was on the previous board when the whole signage thing happened as well, right? So, uh, you know, I my suggestion or recommendation would be just to, once all those criteria are done, we can release the bond. But until then, I vote to keep it as is. Can I? Oh, could, if I could just add through the chair, could we get more information on the lighting and how much do we, is it in the notes? Well, uh, well here's what I've got in a sec. Well, for next my time. comments, and yeah. then I'll, I have a suggestion on how we go forward, okay. which I think we'll incorporate. So I, I just think they were premature. Um, it seems like there's still a few outstanding items, and uh, given that the, you know, we have the impervious surface that was installed when the original requirement was for it to be pervious. Uh, the lighting issue, I think it's, I think we're a little premature, so I would, I would agree to keep the wall. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I have a question and a statement. A uh, question for Jennifer uh, in the notes. It says uh, comments from Chuck Hadlick. Or oh, that was in your table in front of you. Sorry. Oh, okay. He just, he just, his basically, I don't have it in front of me, but basically said um, he would recommend not releasing unless all those items were addressed. We did. Says, um, it says, due to the fact that the existing conditions do not meet the approved design by the planning board, you are going to release the bond at this time. Oh, here it is. Of course, it's the bond. Uh, which is my, my fault. Sure. Okay. I would have saved this. So, my suggestion, which I think incorporates the comments, is you guys have two choices. And my recommendation is not to release the bond at this point. 
So the two choices, either you come back in front of the board with an application to amend for an impervious surface and adding the lights, or you change your sidewalks to pervious and you remove the lights. Uh, and after that is done, then we can reconsider the bond release. So that, can I just? I need, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say just to help them along, just to give them some guidance. If they came back with a request for minor modifications to the to the approved plan for the lighting in the sidewalk, would the board consider that minor, or would you want to see a major? On, we'd have to vote on that at that time. And to that point, if I may, is that you, um, Mr. Market had, had said that it wasn't accounted for the, the, the rooftop drainage or, or something, the rooftop rooftop um, stormwater management and everything that it, it was kind of. Sparse is that what you would No, the, the infiltration system, uh, the stormwater, the, the two detention basins handle our recharge. What we tried to do was add something to that design to capture those best management practices that we were encouraged by this board, a uh, previous version of this board, and the state to incorporate. We said on top of handling our stormwater, why don't we incorporate some of those ideas that work for the site? pervious pavement, rooftop infiltration, as well as some of the other stuff, uh, minimize the tree clearing. Uh, all those things that you sit there and say, okay, that'd be a great thing to add to the project, but it wasn't essential to handle stormwater. So therefore, they became add-ons, if you will, to the original design. So I think we'll find as we re-review it that the bonds can function, but the rooftop infiltration, the pervious sidewalk, the rain garden, were all things we that the uh, owner at the time decided to offer uh, as a way to improve the project. So he made the he made the offer and then retracted it. No, they were included, which is why you have your rain garden, which is why you have your roof individual rooftop infiltration systems, and we have the pervious sidewalk, which I think was discussed with the previous version of this board to go to impervious. It was never discussed with the board. It was on the plan. The landscaping was discussed with the board. So. The pervious slipped by without being pointed out by the okay. applicant. I apologize, and I I had talked to uh, one of the employees of the Davenport Group, and I was under the impression that okay. it had been discussed. So I it apologize. Was never discussed. We have a member. We have a member. Come up to the microphone. Tom Gervie in Five Davenport Lane. Uh, let me comment on a few things. One, the lighting. Uh, and I, I won't speak to procedure. Obviously, procedure has to be followed, and if it wasn't, then obviously that's the developer's fault. But we absolutely have to have that lighting. It isn't, you know, it isn't lighting that's going to be visible from outer right. space. Very, very limited, and, and given the length again of the roadway before you get to the homes, and with the the uh, water crossing that's that's up there, uh, it's a matter of safety both for walkers and for for people who are driving. Well, right now, there's no application for that in front of us. I understand. So my suggestion is either in writing or if, or if you come back. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the residents, you know. speaking as the right. soon-to-be chair of the association, yep. the residents are uh, entirely in favor of <clears throat> the lighting, number right. one. As far as sidewalks uh, and ripping them up, uh, you know, we have, it is what it is. I would, <clears throat> again, suggest that the developer uh, make a request for modification for the impervious that, that he supplied rather than going through the process of tearing it up and putting in a porous surface at this point that would simply delay the process for another four or five months. Um, Just a hypothetical. Sure. If you ordered a granite countertop in your kitchen yes, and you went and it was a laminate would you ask them to change the countertop? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So in effect, we're doing the same thing, I, and I, the approach that we're taking is, is you have a commitment from a developer to do certain <laughs> things. The project was approved with certain things. So right now, there is nothing in front of us asking for these changes. I understand that. So I, I take it into account, and I yeah. understand your point, uh, but I think we have to be consistent. It, it's I, I historically, understand. we have been more open to ask for forgiveness. You know, do, do we want to do and ask for forgiveness? And I think this board, if you haven't picked it up, is is 
not tolerant of that. Not saying we yeah. won't approve it, and it may not be no. the best thing, but. And I understand if, if it doesn't comply with stormwater and, and other, you know, con, con requirements, so be it. I mean, it was, it was uh, done without following proper procedure. Right. And as a former member of ZBA, I, you know, for 15 years, I fully, fully yeah. understand people following procedure. Uh, that having been said, we're looking for a turnover of the association responsibilities from the developer to us now that all the units have been sold. And um, you know, our hope was that it would be relatively soon, not, you know, not six months from now when, when all of these additional things have, have been satisfied. Mm -hmm. So again, the residents would be in favor if it shortens the process of, and if there is an application for impervious uh, you know that the that the planning board consider granting the the uh, the relief for the impervious surface. Finally, I'd I'd like to get an understanding tonight of from the developer of, of when we might expect the the turnover of the association responsibilities. We're we're left with um, in a sense we're left at their mercy using their uh, service providers and yet we don't really have any we we really don't have any control. Uh, over those service providers, and frankly, we don't really have any control over the developer to hold those service providers to their contracts. And there are some aspects that uh, we would uh, manage differently than has been done at this point. So, again, we're looking for uh, to so take over that. The two of them. You think? That's really between the that two. That is of between them. Them. If I may, uh, Mr. Garvin, it's always a pleasure to see you. Um, and we know you understand process. You're in town meeting. Um, the one measure of control that we do have and we, we do want to maintain in this situation until we get a resolution is is the bond itself. Yeah. So um, I'm not disagreeing with that. Previously we mentioned one of our members who's a, a, whose main area of concern is the sidewalks. We had a member whose main area of concern was lighting, uh, who's now on a board of selectmen, Claire Wright, and I'm sure she would be livid that any lighting was installed without permission. Uh, there are neighbors that have a say and have a right to have uh, the proper procedure followed on either side. So um, th that's why we're concerned uh, for all the neighbors. Yeah. Uh, if there's a say, we, this board's also open to safety issues and I'm sure there's other mitigating factors could be worked out mm -hmm. depending on what the situation is. Uh, uh, but I do know, another, I see another former Concon Con member up there that this land can be very wet and it's uh, precarious calculations were uh, were done uh, and uh, to ha I would like to see them now redone for those situation as it is as you pointed out uh, but sometimes it is what it is but sometimes it is what it ain't and that's what we're concerned about thank you thank you so why not it's 827 uh, do we make a motion not to release or do we just take no action I if you don't have to take any action if you're not going to release um, but I would just make sure he's clear on what his, his guidance is. Okay. And was, I'll do an informal, what I stated, which is ask the applicant to come back with the changes to the plan <coughs> reflecting the sidewalks, whatever analysis would be necessary for the sidewalks and a presentation on the lights as a modification of the plan. And then after that, we make the decision of what the next steps are. If I may add to that, though, is that we need an assurance <laughs> from the developer that this won't continue to happen. That when they go to the when they have to do the due diligence, they they should be doing it as everybody else does and not taking it upon themselves to do that. That that I've been on the board for two years now, and and this is. One too many times for it to have to be happen. So that's how I feel. To, to be fair, I don't know how long Victor's been involved with this project, but this project goes back five or six years, too. So I, I understand. A lot from the previous yeah. developer. But, but that's what they buy. Right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> know what you buy, right? Right? right. So, so in, in closing, and I'll, I'll keep it short because I'm long in the tongue, but I, I just think that. that you have 15 seconds. Okay. Your time. You, should, you should really be, be aware of what your due diligence is and to do that um, with intention as everybody else. That's how I feel. Okay. Did I do it in 15 Yes, seconds? you did. Uh, so I think you know what the instructions 
and directions are. Um, so go forward and <laughs> uh, redesign and present in front of us as if you were changing, you were actually doing a formal request. Yeah. Uh, I, you, in fact, we want you to do a formal request to change, and here are the changes, whatever calculations <laughs> are necessary, et cetera, and go from there. Sounds good. Thank you. And remember your next project in town. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, it won't remember. be a next project. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, do we want to, with a, I'm just thinking, do we want to open and continue the? the well, the, so you, the Mass Monarch Woods is being canceled. So you have a letter in front of you okay. asking for a cancellation because they realized that they had already come before you and the Board of Heritage had determined that they were major modifications. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to come back okay. with a full of filing. So okay, we don't have to worry about that. So Okay. Do we need a five minute break or I, I want people's estimate? Well, let's go with the, uh, we'll start a little bit. Can we start a little bit early? Can we continue public now? Um, no, but it's 8.30 now. Okay. Oh, it's 8.30. It's five minute break. <laughs> Technically, you're not supposed to. Make okay. The Approve the minutes, oh, November 27th and December 4th. I make a motion to approve the minutes as stated for November 27th and December 4th. Any changes, comments, questions? To Colby, I have one. Colby was at the one that I need to. What was the date around? No, I think you need November 13th. November 13th. Oh, for yeah. oh, what you yeah. have to write the misleading yes. certificate? Yeah, that's not. Okay. okay. You got a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. So carried. So and we'll take. Oh, I say, can we just quickly talk about the January 22nd meeting and, and the request from the abutter? Or do you want to not do that now? You want to do that after? Yeah, we can do that now. So, there are, uh, an email request for an, uh, so an abutter to the Chamberlain Wayland subdivision who has requested either um, a live conference call for the meeting or that the board go live so that he could watch the meeting because he's going to be out of town. Um, uh, it's the board's decision to make. My only caution to the board is that once you do that for one abutter, you have to then do it for every abutter. So just keep that in mind. It's going to probably be the board to either go live all the time or or not. I mean, that's the decision yeah. you have to make. My suggestion. Yeah, he's going to be able to watch it on right. his computer the next day. So My suggestion is this is going to continue for more than one meeting. And he's got the ability to watch it and submit in writing or appear at the next hearing. And I am very careful of opening the door of saying every meeting potentially <laughs> has to be live. Yeah, it would be one thing if it was a board member who, could, who was going to remotely participate and we needed to go live. You know, that would be, I think, a little different. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Amy has a question. I would be in favor of t having the meeting televised live, but I'm not sure about the call-in aspect. Is that what you're ta we were talking about? Uh, he, well, he suggested the call-in, but then when I was speaking with um, Bob from HCAM earlier, um, he su he suggested like going live and streaming it live so that he could just like watch it on his computer. I mean, but I think I streaming think the meeting live so people could watch it, I think, would be very user-friendly for the residents. Um, I know that once we do it, though, I mean, a lot of the other boards, school committee and selectmen do that already. And I would be okay with that. I don't like the call in aspect. I think that makes it a little yeah. chaotic. But th I would suggest that they could send in their comments in writing uh, before the meeting, because I definitely read all the comments we get uh, via email in advance. I agree with Amy. I, I, I think it would be interesting to, to, to be live and stream live, uh, especially for members that aren't here tonight, for, uh, depending on why they're if they're work, whatever, but travel. But, um, I didn't know we could go live. <laughs> well, I, I think, think that's because we're here. Only in certain we're locations, here. Yeah. right? I like oh, here, here or a town hall, we can go. Yeah. Live. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to, without getting the HCAM formal approval, <laughs> that it's now going to be regular? I'm hesitant about. I, I want to make sure that they can do it. If we're going to commit yeah. to do it, I want to make sure we can. In a fair way. I, th I think the technology already exists through your various cable and files providers to stream anything that they're showing on your Yeah, but the question is, devices. are they showing? Do they have the capability? Is it going to disrupt anything on the HCAM side? 
to broadcast it live as opposed to. Well, like, is there another show at the same time? Well, we could take our break, and I might be able to give okay. you that answer during okay. the break. <laughs> we will take a very short break. <laughs> and so, Jennifer, you want to check? Do we need to open and close this next week? Well, it's in a minute, so I think a couple of minutes were okay. Yeah. I'll make a pit stop. Great.
Jennifer, do you want to give a brief update? Um, sure. So, um, well, do you want to reopen the public hearing before I do that? <laughs> oh, oh, you mean oh, update you about what, uh, uh, what we just talked about? Yes. Okay, so I just spoke with um, HCAM, and they um, indicate that going live all the time is not um, an issue, particularly in the you know short term if we stay on Monday nights. Um, you know, we are the only board really that meets on Monday nights right now that would want to, I mean, ComCom wouldn't want to necessarily go live. Um, so the only thing is, if we tell them we're going live, we go live every day, I mean, not every day, every meeting from 7.30 to whenever we stop, we're running live. So um, you just have to know that. Um, and we would want to tell them that we were going live because like tonight, for an example, we didn't tell them we were live. The school committee is holding a special meeting and they're live and only one board can go live at a time. So, but as long as we lock in Monday nights. Can't do good. split screen. <laughs> no split screen. <laughs> well, they're there. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as we lock in Monday nights, it's not a problem. Do we need to vote for that or can we just? Um, I don't think you need to vote. Just okay. give me direction to uh -huh. tell them to go live. As long as it's feasible. Ke Kelly and Muriel aren't here to, yeah. to weigh in. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it. For David. You can well, the do reason next day, yes, because they, they would meeting. help. That's the meeting. But that's the meeting they need to request. So if we, if we do it for next time, we're locked in just for forever. Well, in all fairness, anybody requests it, then we. Then you'd have to do yeah. it. Like. Okay. Well, I'm comfortable with it, if I, but I don't. Yeah. I think as long as there's no call ins. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, we'll let HQ know. Okay, next item on the agenda, continued public hearing, 253 Lumber Street. And it's, I would normally ask you to say, but I think most of the updates were checking on the town, on the town side, so. Yeah, so we, when we last we left, um, the board had some concerns about the request for a waiver of the environmental assessment. And so they had asked that we ask Beta to provide a scope for the assessment, um, which we did. And we got a response back, basically, it was in your packet, basically said that um, all of this stuff was already provided <laughs> to you that they would have requested anyway. Um, so that they did not recommend, um, well, John and I just took out, discussed it and we decided that meant that they would not recommend any additional environmental assessment, so we told the applicant not to proceed with any additional assessment because that's what BATE is recommending. And that's, I think, what went out before Christmas, if you all saw that to mm -hmm. make comments. I did on. forward that to the board, but got no comments back. Right. Okay, and do you want to touch on the comments from the town departments? That are included um, in your memo? I, thought, I think we did that last time, but sure. Um, um, so um, I know the Board of Health Director um, had concerns about toilets, um, but I think he had some conversations um, with, I don't know if it was you or with my client, you with your client uh, about that. I spoke with him and I think that issue is being resolved. Um, and then Don McAdam, who is the Conservation Administrator and the Earth Removal Agent, provided some comments in the memo and asked for some additional conditions which I included in my list of conditions they I believe were um, 17 18 and 19 on the list the rest of the conditions that I compiled were from the 2011 permit which is what the applicant had requested that we give them the same conditions as the previous permit um, I just changed the dates of the expiration okay the applicant have any comments, questions, changes? Negative. Negative. Uh, before we read the uh, conditions, um, have you gone through them? Any issues, questions? No, I've reviewed them and they look satisfactory. Thank you. Okay. Any Point of order? order? Should, I think the information about the uh, bathroom is newer, so would that no, be that a condition? No, that was in the previous memo. But it, we don't know if it's been resolved or not. Or it um, I believe that's an issue that the Board of Health regulates. I'm not sure that it needs to be regulated through the earth removal permit process. And it says uh, there is no other uncontrolled discharge at the property. And is that a, a who's in charge of that? 
Board of Health or CONCOM or us? Uh, that would be Don as the Earth Removal Agent. Okay. Um, do we need to read all of the? I think Amy had mm -hmm. just one comment. We heard this last time, but as far as we know, the neighbors have not complained about the hours of operation. No, I think I think Joe's a neighbor, right? You haven't, think, you haven't complained about anything, right? No, no issues. Okay. And I think two abutters came last time and said mm -hmm. they yep. would please with mm -hmm. the operation. So. Okay, the proposed conditions, we propose one, the applicant shall maintain a periodically monitored attention basis on the property in order to ensure it continues to be in good working order. A permanent fence shall be maintained around the perimeter of the quarry, steel post and cables with wire mesh number three. All equipment shall be screened from view from the road. Number four, proper and reasonable surface drainage shall be maintained at all times. There shall be no siltation sedimentation or pollution of Echo Lake or the land owned by the Milford Water Company surrounding it. Number five, at the conclusion of the operation or expiration of the permit, the whole area shall be covered with not less than eight inches of loam and seeded with a suitable cover crop except where ledge rock is exposed and the quarry itself. And all large stones and boulders which protrude above the finished surface for finished grade shall be removed. Number six, no debris or material shall be dumped into the quarry. Number seven, the hours of hauling on the public way shall be limited to between the hours of 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Extreme caution and a slow rate of speed shall be exercised on the secondary streets due to the increased number of homes in the area. A maximum of three loads per day may be removed, traveling Lumber Street in either direction. Number eight, the hours of operation at the site shall be 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Saturday. The dire, diamond wire saw may be <coughs> operated beyond those hours, these hours unless a complaint is received by the planning board. Yeah, if the planning board receives a complaint relative to the Saturday hours, the op hours of operation on Saturday shall be changed to 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. If complaints are received relative to use of the diamond wire saw beyond the regular hours of operation, there shall be no further use of the saw beyond those hours. Use of a fuel and air torch is prohibited. Number nine, the period of quarry operation shall be from February 15th to November 30th each year. If the planning board receives a complaint relative to Saturday hours, and the hours are eliminated, the operation shall be permitted year-round without such restrictions. Number 10, the following truck route shall be used when going to and from the site. The vehicle operator shall give due consideration of school bus traffic at all times. From Lumber Street to Granite Street to Hayden Row and south on Hayden Row to north on Hayden Row to Granite Street to Lumber Street. From Lumber Street southerly into Milford to Lumber Street Northerly from Milford to the quarry. Number 11, the removal operation shall be restricted to the area shown on the plan entitled Updated Existing Conditions of Proposed Quarrying, prepared by Guerrera and Halnan, dated October 26. I assume it's 2017. Oh, 2017, <laughs> sorry. We have to wait until 21-7 before <laughs> to review it. Number 12, the applicant shall maintain the security of the area by placing large boulders in the road during periods when the quarry is not operated or by means of a proper gate. During operation, a, a cable across the entrance shall be acceptable. Number 13, the applicant shall post a bond or make a deposit with the town in the amount of $12,000 to guarantee conformity with the provisions or conditions of the permit. The guarantee shall be deposited with the town prior to the commencement of operations under this permit. The town may use the bond or deposit in the event that the applicant does not comply with all of the terms and conditions of the permit and complete all restoration in a manner satisfactory to the board and in accordance with the permit. Significant public safety hazards exist, which will not be addressed by the applicant or material environmental damage has resulted from the earth removal activity and remediation will not be addressed by the applicant in a manner satisfactory to the board. Number 14, in the event that any of the permit conditions 
are not faithfully observed and performed, the board shall have the authority to revoke the permit at any time in accordance with the provisions of the earth removal bylaw. Number 15, the permit is not assignable. Number 16, the duration of the permit shall be January 8, 2018 to January 8, 2020. Number 17, monitor stormwater runoff and pumping operations from any renewed quarry operations to ensure that all silt laden runoff is directed into the sedimentation basin. Number 18, conduct periodic inspections and actively maintain the sedimentation basin to ensure that it is functioning properly and to remove and legally dispose of accumulated sediments as needed to maintain capacity and designed infiltration rates. Number 19, allow town inspectors to periodically enter the site to verify that the sedimentation basin is functioning properly and is being actively maintained. I just want to just clarify on number 13 that that bond is already in place um, with the town. Any comments from the board? Just one I have to the, to the part about where we allow a cable to go across. Isn't that a health risk at some point for, for children? I have no idea. I mean, that was what was in the existing permit, so I have no yeah. I, I idea. think we should add something to that. And because if kids are walking by there and get curious, they can just go right in over the cable. Well, I think we also have a the question also becomes it's vehicular. Is there any other gates within the site, or is it? The, the entire quarry is fenced in. OK. So I'm, I'm not sure. The cable for the, uh, excuse me, I, I didn't mean to. The go. cable at the entrance road during operating hours. When, when it's not being operated, right? Let's when, see, which condition so I can take a look at Number, it? Number, um, <laughs> no, sorry, one second. Number 12. Number 12, yeah. So this is, isn't this the uh, intent to be a gate to keep people out? Mm -hmm. is, isn't yes. that yes. the purpose of the? Of yeah, the, it just, uh, it gives you the option of a cable if you wanted to use a cable, but I So I, have a gate. my question about the cable is, is safety, how, how that looks for safety for, for kids that are in the neighborhood or, or thereabouts walking into the site and it's a quarry. So I think the, the question and following up on your question is, is there a gate there that's closed during operation and open when vehicles have to pass? You know, I'm going to ask the neighbor if he knows how to look, what the gate looks like, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, there's a chain link uh, fence uh, on a rolling system, uh, probably eight foot tall. It's open in the morning when they show up at 7 and closed as they leave at 5.30. So okay. during the day, someone could conceivably walk in there. Okay, and the during operation is the cable. So the question. No, I think the I think number twelve is when it's not an operation. Well, it says during operation, the cable across the entrance will be accepted. Okay. So I read that to mean that while it's an operation, if a kid were to wander in, there'd be somebody there to say. Yeah, I think they mean like between yeah. February fifteenth and November thirtieth, you could use a cable instead of boulders. I think that's what that, I mean, that's what I read that. Okay. But. So if we have a lots of questions, including the applicant, then I think it does need clarification. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't write it. I wasn't here when it yeah. was written, so I don't know. I mean. Can I ask, I mean, would, would the applicant be amenable to removing the, the, the cable part and just saying that the gate should be closed when, it, when in operation? Well, I think the basic question is to operate. What is the definition of operation? Is it during operating business hours or operating season? So I think we have to clarify that. So if the site is maintained and uh, if there are, if it's manned, if the site is manned in an operation, what are we requesting? Is a cable See, acceptable? No, I, I don't. I don't interpret number two. I haven't. I haven't been there lately, so I can't tell you what was there. And I was happy that our neighbor could reflect this. But I think this is a description of a of a of a metal fence. Is what's in two. I don't think that we're no, talking that, about that two, two, 12. Twelve. Oh, 12? Yes. I thought twelve. I think said two. Because there certainly even is less protection from boulders. 
During operation, the cable across the entrance will be acceptable. And I think obviously the cable is to keep uh, people in cars from traveling uh, down there. Um, is it practical to close the gate uh, dirt while the place is in operation and employees are there? Perhaps not. So there's a safety concern on my I, I would, to the chair, I'd actually agree with the applicant here. During business hours, I don't think they can expect to put a gate up when the trucks are going in and out. Yeah. It just doesn't seem practical. But, when if the gate, but what they do, hold on, if I may. Please. What they, what they, what they do is they, they keep the gate, from what I understood from Mr. Marketing, was that they close the gate, and when a truck has to leave, they open it. Is that is that how what happens, Joe? No. Sorry, I may not have been clear. There is a, a chain link fence that spans that driveway plus another five or six feet, so you can't slip around the outside with a vehicle or a motorcycle or a dirt bike, those sorts of things. They open it when they show up at 7, and they close it on the way out at 5.30. So between 7 and 5.30, during the truck traffic time, that gate so across the driveway is open. And there's no cable either? No. I'm, I'm agreeing with Frank's position that the way it's written, they could have a chain, it's acceptable, um, will be acceptable, uh, and it's during the operating hours, as it's, I, I, that's how it's written to, mm -hmm. to my eyes, and it's during the work day when they're there. And if they have one, they have one, if they don't, they don't, it's the way it's written. So, first of all, related to the cable, what I would suggest is changing the wording during operational hours as opposed to anybody interpreting it as the entire season is operating. Mm -hmm. um, and the second is related to the time during periods when the quarry is not operated. Is there an issue with say, saying by means of a proper gate and eliminating the boulder, launch boulders? Because it appears to be you do they do close the gate at yeah, night. I think you want the option there in the unlikely event something happens to the gate that they can otherwise secure the premises by by having the boulders there. I don't think there's a reason to eliminate that option unless you well, unless you the, want to. I think the question that the board has is to keep children from wandering and the boulders going around the boulders is it going to be a hindrance for that is that right, is absolutely that correct. Access. And then also also we know Milford Quarry and that, and that, all the years that I've known Milford Quarry, there have been multiple deaths at that place, and I wouldn't, I would hate to have anybody be hurt on on the premises on, in Hoffington. So, if we change it to the applicant shall maintain the security of the area by means of a proper uh, security of the area when the quarry is not operated by means of a proper gate during operational hours, a cable across the entrance will be acceptable. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is that, that wording acceptable to the applicant? Uh, yeah. Yes, it is acceptable. Okay. So can we get a motion to issue the permit subject to the conditions as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Five. Five. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you in less than two years. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy Thank New Year. You. Uh, two other items. Um, I wanted to let the board know that uh, Pulte has requested a meeting uh, with uh, Jennifer and myself to present a uh, sign. And the sign that we requested be taken down is still up. And they've given no indication that they will be taking it down. So personally, I have said I refuse to meet with them when they have a violating sign uh, that is up. Um, if they want to come in front of the board, obviously an applicant can come in front of the board, uh, but to meet with them ahead of time, 
if they have a sign which we've requested to take down and they're refusing to do it, I can't see meeting with them. Are they intently refusing to take the sign down or have we requested when the last meeting we had? I, yes, we've requested it. Roy has spoken to them and the sign is still up. And all it means is you, if you want to take the sign down, you just have to go like this. <laughs> so the sign is still up and in discussions, there seems to be no indication that they plan on taking the sign down. And not to speak for them, because I'm clearly not speaking for them, but I think from their perspective is the, the sign, that's the sign they want to meet about, and they want to then come to the board and request permission for the off-premise sign. And so I think in their mind, they don't want to do the work twice. But that's, I'm not but saying it's right is, or wrong, I'm just saying the that's their... Very similar <clears throat> to do something and then ask for permission right. that we just have right. a discussion. Right, and again, I'm not I supporting their position. I'm just letting you know what I think their position is. But I don't know if that's the case because that sign was there when, prior to them getting Legacy Farms North, right? No. 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 Sign went up just before. The sign went up after they were told the sign on the south side. Mm -hmm. it, it's a little assignment that's homes for sale. And it went up in probably late August. After they knew, we questioned the sign on the south and they whitewashed it. That sign went up actually before they came in front of us to put a larger sign up. And we discussed it at that point. They didn't do anything. We brought it to Roy's attention for the holiday, and it is still up. In the minutes, what did we, what did we pull up on the on the minutes as far as um, what was our what was our intention when we discussed with Polte mm -hmm. about removing the sign or moving the sign up the road I, I remember we they had to come in front of us and they did though no no so so they can move the sign up the road on their property, property. and not it's be in not violation yes. but this sign is on Roy's property so on their property, so it's considered off-premise. They came in front of us and we did not approve putting a new sign at this location. So what they've done is they put a new sign on this location, which we specifically refused to give them the permission to do, and hoping we either did notice it <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, so This I'm, is even more egregious, though, <clears throat> than our, our previous um, applicants because they came before us for a road acceptance, and John specifically called them out and said, why is there a sign there? Right. Well, and in their defense, so that wasn't them. That's Roy McDowell. Right. That's a different entity. Right. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. he doesn't have some pull with them, and he couldn't. It's on Roy's property, it's on so his I property. hold Roy right. as responsible as pull. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I understand so, what you're saying, but I'm also just letting you know that there are two different entities. So. Sure. And isn't it true that technically the whitewash sign is also a sign, even though there's nothing on yeah. it? And that's still up. Right. That's, so they're waiting us out or something. Um, that's the feeling I get. Yeah. I think the issue is the, the directional sign, right? Saying houses down there. Well, that's what it is. It says new homes. Even the, the whitewash one is? No, the whitewash is right. not. So. But it's still a sign. It's still a temporary yeah. sign. So just want you to know my position is yeah. if they want to come in front of the board, that's fine, but I'm not going to meet with them. We'll see who blinks first. Yeah. Well, I don't plan <laughs> what, to blink. What is our recourse in, in, the, in the face of the bylaw, violation I mean, of the bylaw? Yeah, so it's a violation of the zoning bylaw, so the zoning enforcement officer could um, issue a citation or yes. remove the sign. Or That's if we haven't done it already, because I think we tried that once. So should we reach out to them with a letter? Um, reach out to who? So Pulte? I don't think a letter's necessary. I've got Project plenty Manager of phone sounds. call messages on my desk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said I don't think a letter's necessary. I have plenty of phone messages on my desk. So. Oh, well, the only <laughs> they are aware of it, and the intention is, I don't know what their intention is, but the fact that they are aware of it and they're aware of our position on the side. I will, I will make them clear. I will, I will, so I don't think it's been spelled out in so many words to remove the sign. I think it's been sort of, Hinted at and suggested. That's, that's what I think. I, 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 specific direction. I don't yes, know that. They had it for Roy, with Roy, to Roy maybe, yeah. but to yes. Pulte, I don't know that. But, I wasn't part of it. They haven't been in front of us 
Right. You tell them you can't put up a sign, and then okay. they put us beside. But you told Roy, but I, we don't know what Roy told them. Right. So let me no, no, tell no, no, them. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, they came in front of us, said we want to put up a sign mm -hmm. here. We said no, and a little sign that hopefully we would notice went up. Okay. Let me <laughs> let me make it perfectly clear to them that the sign needs to come down yes. and see what happens. Is that Mark? Hmm? Is that Mastriani? Not Mark. No. What's his name? It's Pulte. Yeah. Pulte. No, the, the, it is Mastriani, yes. The, one of them. It's Mark Mastriani. Mark. Oh, oh, yeah, Mark Mastriani. Yes. Well, it's actually Reed Blute, who I believe. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. It's this senior guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Reed, Reed okay. sat in front of us when. Yes. He, yes. Right. Multiple right. times. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. Right. You, you remember John getting upset about right. it. Yeah. Specifically, the moment that we're talking about is when John told Reed. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. The board told Reed. Okay. And we have one other item. So I have an announcement to make. Um, I have uh, given my two weeks notice to the town of Hoppington, and I will be leaving the town's employee. My last day will be January 19th. So it's been great working with all of you, and I appreciate everything, but I'm on to better, hopefully, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger and better. Wow, congratulations. I congratulations. Think it's an order, maybe. Yes, I'll be um, going. Well, Before hopefully, if they meeting. approve me tomorrow night, the uh, to, as the director of community and economic development for the town of Bridgewater. Nice. Wow. wow. So, if you want tomorrow, I can give people the telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't take that job on if you if you built my resort for me. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, thank you. Congratulations. And Jennifer. since this will be your last meeting, you will yes. be. You will be missed, and we wouldn't be able to do what we do without your expertise. Colby, you have big shoes to fill. So you're not <laughs> you're not training anybody to take your position? Um, no, uh, I believe Elaine is going to fill in for me in the interim, and then I assume she'll do the training. Because I, I have to start in Bridgewater on February 5th, and um, they haven't even advertised my job yet. So. Wow. <laughs> and it's our responsibility to. To select the new nope. Nope. No, it's, no, it's, it's hard. I'm hired through Norman. I'm okay. Norman hires me. Yeah. But job. through the charter, though, it's not, this, Elaine's the town planner. Elaine is the town planner. Right. And planner. so planner. that's separate from her assistant role. And then we decide the salary and everything. We didn't do that last time because it no, wasn't in the charter. The, not for this position. This is not a town planner position. It goes under town planner, though. In a charter, we have the town planner, and then that's, that's the only our person. person. That's the only right. person. Right. Right. Which is Elaine one. still, technically. Yes. Okay. I mean, I guess, kind of. <laughs> I mean, technically, we don't have one. I mean, she doesn't hold the title of town planner. So technically, there is no town planner in this town. Uh, something we got to fix then. Yeah. So we can hire a new, for, for a new town planner, and then. Yeah. Yeah, the one good? Well, congratulations, yeah, and I, I wish you all the best. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're great at what you do, and they should be. Thank you. Which one would be lucky? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I know all the members that are on the board, not to talk about people who aren't here, but also thought you, you did a really good job. Thank Excellent. Yes. Yeah, Excellent. and I, I will reach out to them tomorrow. I just yeah. didn't want to. Maybe we should do a road trip to her first public <laughs> meeting. Oh, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice, huh? Like, Visit me anytime. We'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> Clapped in the back. That's our girl. Um, yeah. Speaking of, uh, maybe. A, a well, why don't we adjourn yeah. the meeting and then that's really cool. motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. So carried. Okay. Cut the light.